Hello everyone. I'm an engineer from Pinkat, the company that made HackAV. And uh, I'm here to share with you our experience with implementing distributed event streaming from HackAV. Before we get to business, here's some background about myself. I'm Zixun Liu, a software engineer at Pinkat, and I'm part of the data migration team. I'm a contributor to TechAV and one of the maintainers of TechCDC. Within the field of computer science, my interests are databases, operating systems, distributed systems, and for education, I'm an alumnus of the University of Chicago and was part of the class of 2018. Now, let's go over today's agenda. First, I'll give a brief introduction to TechAV, and then I'll talk about the high-level design of our uh, distributed event streaming project. Um, then I'll talk mainly two aspects of the detailed design. And then I'll, um, I'll also talk about our use of EDCD and uh, the high, av high availability we implemented with it. Okay, now let me talk a little bit about TechAV to give you some background for the main topic of this talk. TechAV is a distributed transactional key value database, and uh, it is a graduated project of the CNCF. This diagram shows the overall architecture of TechAV. So this is a TechAV cluster with four machines. We use shared nothing architecture so that TechAV can run on commodity hardware with no special equipment needed. Each machine can host multiple regions. The number of regions on each machine can be quite high, like more than 10,000. These regions are replicated by raft protocol and are regulated by placement driver, which is a component that runs out of, outside of the TechAV processes and communicates with TechAV by gRPC. Here I summarize four points that are helpful to understand before we proceed. Uh, first, TechAV is a transactional key value storage where you can manipulate multiple keys within a transaction. Second, the keys are sharded into multiple regions. Well, you can regard the region as a replicated key value store. Third, the regions are replicated by using raft protocol which provides strong consistency among the replicas. And the fourth point is that regions can merge and split while being regulated by the placement driver. In order to demonstrate the rationale behind the design choices we made when implementing data streaming, it's important to go over the abstraction layers of PyKV. First, on the top of everything is the transaction layer. The transaction layer is where our concurrency control protocol is implemented. We use a percolator-like protocol, but I'll not go into detail of that. Our protocol requires a multi-versioned key value data store, and uh, that's our second layer. The third layer is called RefKV, which is where replication comes into play. And we use Reft to maintain consistent replicas of regions, uh, if you recall. Uh, at the bottom is the Rocks DB that we use to persist data onto the disk. Now, with these layers in mind, let me introduce you to the main goal that we want to achieve here. So, on a high level, our goal is to create connectivity from PyKV. This is what the development of the data processing ecosystem is demanding, and the real time data capture is meaningful in that it creates connectivity to other parts of the ecosystem. Uh, for example, we can capture all data changes in TechAV to Kafka, and uh, from there, the data can be processed by Flink, etc. cetera. So um, this project is actually a step towards using TechAV as a hub for data exchange. This is something very, uh, very significant. And we also have other projects that uh, include the data imports from other sources. The most basic goal 
is to be able to capture new rights to Thai KV. This is basically what we mean when we talk about event streaming. But only the new data is not enough because from time to time we'll need to read historical data from RocksDB because as a user of because as a user of a change data capture tool, you may want to get a little bit back into the history and retrieve, say, a data stream that starts from five minutes before present. The most important and also the most challenging sub goal is to preserve the atomicity and consistency of transactions. A consumer of the change log should be able to retrieve the transactions in exactly the order in which they were applied to the database. Such an order must exist because we support snapshot isolation. We'll talk more about transactions later. And uh, when we got started, we first needed to decide where we should capture the data. We wanted to choose an appropriate abstraction level where we intercept the data rights. First, we skip the transaction layer. Implementing data capture at the transaction layer basically means that we are, or we would have to record each API calls. Uh, this means that we would need to do a lot of extra bookkeeping to achieve the level of consistency that we wanted. So we went down uh, one level and look at the MVCC layer. Uh, this is not a good level to work with because, um, well, it's a distributed multi-version key value store and uh, there's no centralized data structure that we can monitor. Uh, so we needed to go further down and uh, uh, let's take a look at RaptKV. Uh, the RaptKV is a system of replicated state machines, meaning that we can monitor the state, transi state transitions on each of these machines. We also needed to make use of the RocksDB. Uh, even though it's not good for listening for changes, uh, from time to time, we need to read from it and uh, get some data that's written in the past. Well, uh, it's actually possible to capture RocksDB's right ahead log, but since regions are moving constantly here and there across the nodes and the TIKV can go down and up at any time, it's hard to uh, circumvent the concept of the region and uh, capture RocksDB changes directly. Now, since there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the RAPKV state machine and the TIKV region, we decided on an architecture where we capture data on each region and then we do something to combine the data streams from all regions. Uh, I'm gonna walk you through the thought process through which we arrived at the current design of the algorithm that we use to combine the data. The high level design is this. First, we will receive data from all regions. You can think of this as, an, as receiving from multiple streams simultaneously. And then we decide that. And when we decide that all regions are done with sending transactions whose commit yes is less than or equal to some value, we produce a watermark. Uh, this would be a watermark uh, in the conventional sense for the for streaming system. Then we store the data and restore the transactions that are earlier than that latest watermark. Uh, with this high-level idea in mind, let's continue. This is an overview of the types of events that we receive from each region. We have pre write uh, which has the start yes of the transaction, the key and the value. And we have commit, which is paired with pre-write, and it contains both start yes, the commit yes, and the key. And we have lock, which contains the start yes and the key, and we have unlock. Now we know the four types of events. Let's take a look at the first attempt of making an algorithm to produce the final data stream. Here I use the pseudocode with a syntax that's similar to that of Rust since TyKV is written in Rust. We assume a data 
type that's called a TXN event that represents the items of a stream that has watermarks in it. We have a special name for this watermark and we call it the resolve TS. But quickly, we ran into a problem. What should the resolve TS be? We didn't really have enough information here. The locks are being tracked, and it's it's easy to know the start TSs of the transactions that have been that have placed at least one lock. But the problem here is that we don't know if there is a transaction uh, that has an earlier start TS that is so being processed and is yet to write a lock. Here we summarize the problem. The events themselves say nothing about whether a region has a pending transaction whose commit TS is smaller than the minimum of all current lock start TS. Uh, it's possible for such transactions to commit if there's no conflict. To resolve this problem, we'll need the placement driver's assistance. Now, let's take a second try. We no longer try to generate a watermark from the same thread as the one that processes the region's data. Notice that we still need to track the logs because the start TSs of the logs provide a lower bound of the commit TSs of the running transactions. In addition to the function um, show, shown in the previous slide, we, all, uh, we need to launch another thread. And the reason is that we um, we need a barrier here. Uh, we need at least two concurrent threads because a barrier is needed to wait for all pending writes to be observed. In this piece of code, we first read the latest uh, logical commit, logical timestamp from PD, and then we enforce what we would call a barrier here, so that when we read the locks here, uh, all previous writes would have already been processed. This way, we can generate a watermark for a single region. Next, I'll show how to further process the data. But before getting into detail, I'll introduce you to another distributed component separate from TyKV, TyCDC. TyCDC is designed with three goals in mind. First, uh, from a management point of view, we want we wanted the data streaming component to iterate separately from TypeKV. And uh, the second goal is that we aim to design a fully distributed component to eliminate every single point of failure in the stream processing process. And uh, third, we wanted a component that is separate from TypeKV um, because we'd like, to, we'd like it to work with TypeDB which is a relational database project that we built upon TyKV. But uh, TyDB is managed independent, independently from TyKV, so we wanted TyCDC to be independent too. Uh, this is the, what the architecture looks like with TyCDC. This diagram did not show the TyKV nodes because nodes are no longer important here. ICDC communicates directly with the regions that uh, that can be migrated from nodes node to node. Uh, so we don't need to think about TyCV nodes when we design the high level logic of TyCDC. There are two concepts that we need to clarify a little bit, spans and regions. Spans are just the intervals in the key space. The keys in TyKV are totally ordered, so it's possible to define ranges on them. And uh, the placement driver can be queried to uh, find out which regions correspond to what span. TyCDC then schedules GRPC connections to TyKV regions with the knowledge of this span to region mapping. When regions merge or split, TyCDC will reschedule the effective span based on the new span to region mapping. And uh, another way why spans are important is that they are used as keys into a segment tree, which is used to track the watermarks of the regions. So 
here is an uh, example. It shows the uh, how Thai CDC connects to the regions and they receive the push stream from each of them. And uh, uh, highlighted are the resolved TSs that are being produced from each of the regions. Uh, this example is a little bit complicated, so you guys can uh, take a close look at it when you download the slides. And there are a few more points that we need to mention uh, for you to uh, get a complete picture. Uh, first, uh, now, now that we have a stream event separated by watermarks, uh, it's very easy to sort the stream and to combine the events to produce a stream of transactions. Second, we implemented high availability using EDCD to distribute it as EDC. Uh, Third, to make PyCDC a useful product, we made it support decoding TyDB records. Um, so it can be used to capture changes from TyDB. What we have implemented is similar to MySQL bin log, but PyCDC is capable of writing the events directly to various kinds of downstream, such as MQs, F3 files, and uh, MySQL compatible relational databases such as MySQL itself and PyDB. One important point in our implementation is that we make ex extensive use of type. Of, we make extensive use of ETCD. We make use of it mainly in two ways. First, we use it as a persistent state storage for fault tolerance and recovery. This makes Thai CDC a stateless service and makes it very easy to deploy and maintain it. Second, we use EDCD as a consensus service to maintain a current state of the Thai CDC cluster that all nodes can agree on. This is crucial uh, because um, if you want to implement it, if implement high availability, you need to know which nodes are alive and what they are doing. Uh, now I'll show you an example of how high availability works. Um, first, uh, we add a node. We add another node. The first node is now elected the owner of the cluster. The owner is the node that's in charge of actively manipulating the state of EDCD to coordinate the nodes. And the owner decides what tasks need to be run and uh, assign the tables that are to be replicated to each node that is available. We can add new nodes at any time. When the owner uh, discovers a new node, it will initiate table migration if there's significant imbalance in the workload. Now the table migration is completed. In the event of node failures, the owner will reassign the tables previously being replicated by the dead node. Now, as you can see, a surviving node takes the table. And the owner itself can go down too. In this case, a new owner will be elected. And the new owner will compare the current state of the cluster with the desired state. And it will assign the tables that are not being rep replicated to a surviving node, including itself. That is all I plan to share today. If you have any questions or want to join us, please visit our website or con contact us in the Slack channel. Here are some useful links.